guys, today I am bringing you my review of Digimon Adventure Try Confession. And I'll be honest, it was honestly probably my least favorite one so far. I'm not even really going to talk about the first couple of parts, the first like two or three episodes. That's because the first two episodes were pretty much useless. We got to meet up Meko, Miko, Mika, I think her name is Mika, I keep on forgetting her name. But we get to make Mako get yeah, Mako. We get to meet Mako's dad, who turned out to really not be anybody important, which was kind of disappointing. He's just a researcher. That was disappointing. And a lot of it was just build up. I would say episode like 11. It starts on episode 9. No, 9 and 10 are pretty much useless. Episode 11, we find out about the reboot from, uh, the possessed Hikari, which to this day I still, I never fully understood why it's specifically Kari to get possessed all the time. At this point, I'm assuming it is something to, I'm sorry about that, my lighting was messing up, but at this point I'm going to assume it is something to do with her crest being the crest of light, maybe? I'm not really sure, maybe because she has the crest of light, but then again, she doesn't have the physical crest anymore. So I, yeah, I don't really know on that one. But yeah, it's a lot of the typical Digimon Adventure tree stuff. We only get to see one Mega Evolution this time, though, which was nice. Yeah, I felt like they were be kind of becoming oversaturated. Last time we got Rosemon and crap, the yeah. uh. I know, we, we got two last time. I forgot which one we got, but we got two last time. And, you know, it's becoming a little oversaturated, so it's nice to have a change of pace. We got to see a couple, we got to see, uh, some of the ultimate level evolution, which was awesome. We also got to see an, an Anduamon, an Anduamon animation, which was great for her evolution. Um, I don't know how I like the new design. Fine, I guess. I guess it just, it's more prominent what she looks like in this better animation. It's more a little bit like, oh, that looks a lot more sexualized than it originally just looked cartoonish. But no, in this new style, it's very sexualized. When thinking back on it, it was always like that, but it just, it worked in this. Like, you can tell it's worse in this. But, uh, I mean, honestly, I liked it. I liked the part with Light Kari. One of my, my, probably my favorite part was when, after all the Digimon pretty much realized that if the reboot happened, they were going to lose all their memories, and how they all were saying goodbye to everybody. I did it really interacting with their partners. You know, it, it was really nice because the partners don't know what's going on, but we as an audience do. And they had this really, the music there was great. I also, I love the, the stuff with TK and Panamon. Those were the only parts of the first two episodes that were important. I, I love that thing where he's the first... I, the thing that got me, like, got me to like, have some feel, was when uh, Panamon just looked at TK and was like, I'm infected, right? If, it, like, if, if, like, if I become infected, I want you to finish me off. That is the equivalent to saying, I want you to kill me. I mean, that was, that was, that got me. And that really did start to get to me a little bit. But another thing that I liked when he told the other Digimon as well to kill him. If he, if he was he lost control. And you know, they really they were ready to sacrifice themselves for this reboot. You know, apparently if the if, if Makomon appeared again and this reboot didn't take place, the digital world went up being destroyed. And I guess because of the I guess I had forgotten about this, but the digital world and the human world are connected. So if the human world, if the digital world is destroyed, the human world would lose all electronic devices. With, like, all electronics if the, the human world would stop working, including airplanes, like, refrigerators, there would be no electricity, and did you have to realize it is like 2005, 2006, 2007, where it takes place, but the world it takes place in, so when you removed all electronics, if everything else went, ran on electricity, if the entire world stopped working at the same instant, a lot of people would die, and it would practically be the end of the world. 
be a weird human being to rely on it so much. So, yeah, that'd be the end of the world. So, yeah, I mean, the fight scene and the, the last part was really good. I really, I liked it. But what I guess was a little dragged out, but I guess it had to be just because the episode needed, they wanted, they really wanted to end the episode at a certain point. And so, I really did like how, like, Izzy created, like, the data box to store all the memories of all the Digimon. Like, when, when they had found out what had happened, I liked that, how they... They're trying. I liked how they had a goal to put all. I would, when that first happened, I was like, "Oh, they're just going to back up all their memories, and the end of the reboot, just give them back their memory. No problem, right?" Yeah, but they failed to get to go into the box and back up their data, which is what I liked because I didn't expect that. That I was like, "What the hell?" I was like, "I, I, I thought it was just tension, just." Uh, they were setting up tension to just have tension, that's what I expected, then no. They set something up, and they followed through with it, which is what I like. Now, let's get to the thing that I didn't like, and not because they weren't necessary, but because they were complete bullshit. Okay, so in the very beginning, Kari and TK go to check on all the members of the Season 2 cast. And they're showing great concern for them. But then later on, Maki shows up with a D terminal and and a and a black Digivite and a black season two Digivite that looks just like Ken's Digivite. Ken Ichijoji, you know him? Yeah, they don't question that, which is what really pisses me off. Because one, how the hell did Ma Maki had a, a D terminal and a Digivite? Actually, a lot of the stuff this organization does, I kind of question. Because a lot of the stuff they do, I sit there and I'm like, but you shouldn't have access to it. How the hell do they know how to, how the hell do these people have any idea of opening a digital game? I, didn't, I get that again, I contacted them, but even to the, even to all the, even to the digital but children, children, in prior seasons, Op the gate was kind of something that just opened and closed. And it was kind of like, when the children were needed, the gate would open. When they weren't needed, the gate would close. But in this, it's kind of like, oh, we, we know how to open a gate. And then it's like, oh, okay, apparently. And another thing I'll get, Agumon got, all the Digimon got into the human world somehow, right? So why had they, like, why are they just now going to the digital world? You would think they would go to the digital world and try to find Genai and get some answers or something. Is that the fun problem with Tree? They're not proactive at all. They kind of just sit around and wait for shit to happen. Which is really frustrating. It really is. But yeah, the stuff with Maki bothered me. Like, nobody questions why Maki had, had any of these devices. Especially with the season 2 cast missing. Okay. We're not, not, we're not supposed to question that. Got it. I won't question it. It's bullshit, but okay. I guess we're not, I guess we're supposed to be okay. We're not getting answers because we're all stupid and we're not going to notice that this is all bullshit. No, but what bothered another thing that bothered me was how they was the way they opened the, the gate because that was so different. Like they're they're really ignoring the season two continuity here. Like. They open it like, why not just use the computer? Like, wouldn't that be the last time of the, can't you do the laptop? And then that what they did all throughout season two, is you but did you get in the laptop? Or computer? I, who, I don't know, all right? I, I, I really, at this point, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot, there's a couple of things that I really didn't like in this. I'm sorry, by the way, you can hear background noise. That's my air conditioner and a couple of my dehumidifier. I'm sick. So, yeah. No, but, um... Is there, and there one last thing that really pissed me off about this, to be honest, is the place they ended it at. I feel like it should have ended with a Digimon disappearing after the reboot. I feel like it would have been a much better ending. But no, we get the stuff. Like, apparently, Mako Mon called the Meg Mako confessed that she thinks that she is sure that because of the infection in Makomon, oh my god, no one on the internet called, nobody in the world called it. This is a big, big confession, right guys? None of us figured out that 
and they come on and they go somehow caused all this shit. None of us. Nope. None of us figured that would happen. Not a single goddamn one of us figured that would happen. No, but we to, it's like it's a very misleading title. The exact bleh. The fact that she, they come on the call, that's the big confession that it ain't that third. And then it pissed me off. But then they go to the digital world, and nice to see the digital world intact again, but, uh, I think it was, uh, Chessmon and, and, uh, Alphamon were fighting in the digital world when they arrived. So I assumed with the reboot, everybody would get turned back to their baby forms and, like, rookie forms and grow up again. I was wrong, but then all the children, children, Digimon, like, Guru, Kuromon and all of them are young. And Kari Gwistle is still in the digital world. I mean, that kind of makes sense, because Kari Gwistle is, of course, real, it's not made of data. Well, the digital world, I guess it would be made of data, but I guess it may, I guess because of the way it works when a human is there, and human items go into the digital world, I guess it was unaffected by the reboot. That's the only thing I can think of, and it's, and also, here's a, isn't it part of the, weren't these Guruman, weren't they all grown? Like, grown to know these people? Like, shouldn't they automatically know who Ty is, who Thor is? Gatamon, maybe not because of the brainwashing by my Otismon. Didn't they grow? Weren't they. Weren't they Digimon created specifically to be partnered with these children? Isn't that what we said in season one? Like, it, the first thing uh, Kuromon said at the time when they met was, Ty, I've been waiting for you forever. And I'm like. So wait, if you were born into a distance to, to be the partner of these people, I understand forgetting your memories and your experiences with them after meeting them, but you shouldn't forget who they are, right? Right? Or am I crazy? Am, am I wrong? Whatever, that, that really, that didn't make sense. And I guess this didn't affect Genai, because we find out later that the Digimon Kaiser or Digimon Emperor is Genai. Yeah, so I guess the reboot didn't affect him, and either of you to get you and forget, Genai made of data. Everything in the digital world, even when a human goes there, they are made of data. Everything in there is made of data. So everything should have been affected by it, but I guess not. If people have theories about like, People have theories that Genon is corrupted, the corrupted, it, it, it corrupted, like the Digimon are. It, nobody has a problem with the fact that Genon wasn't rebooted. That doesn't make sense. Ah, oh, pisses me off. And, uh, yeah, but, but, but without the Alphamon and the Chessmon thing, do you remember the, the Royal Knights, from what I understand? My, my, my Digimon knowledge doesn't really go too far beyond the actual show. But what I understand, they're members of the Royal Knights. So maybe they're just so powerful that they weren't affected by the reboot. Or maybe the reboot is made to not affect the Royal Knights. Or maybe when they, I don't know. And maybe the, or maybe they were rebooted, but they have stayed at that level of power and they're fighting about something stupid. Yeah, isn't that something like whenever the Royal Knights are shown, are they arguing with each other? Isn't that their thing? They don't like each other? Uh, they all hate each other for some reason. They had the same goals, but different ideas of how to attain it. I didn't like that. And, uh, we need, I just don't, there's a lot of things that unclear about how the reboot worked. I'm going to assume that it didn't rewind time in the, in the digital world. Only the actual people there, like the Digimon. Because if they rewind the time, that would mean Devimon would be on File Island again. Now, this isn't a big deal if they are. If it did rewind time, it's not the end of the world. Because a good majority of the stuff that Digi Destin face in season one, they can easily handle again. But I mean, from the Dark Master, the Dark Master, are, I am really sorry about that. Damn it. But no, but um, some of the Dark Masters are legitimately dangerous even still now. 
And they obviously wouldn't want to retell any of that material again. So what I would assume is that when the Digimon get their memory back, we're going to, over time, we're going to realize that time hasn't been reversed. Like, Desimon, the Dark Masters, my Odefmon, they're all still gone. They've been handled. We don't need to handle them again. I really hope to God we don't need to handle them again. There's still a couple more movies. There's enough movies where they did, like, one bad guy, one one arc for, like, two episodes for every arc in season one. They could do that. There were only three major villains in season one. They could do two episodes dedicated to re-defeating each villain. They could do that. I'm really worried. I really hope they don't do that. Yeah, that would suck. You know, a lot of that would be boring. But, yeah, so I'm going to assume the next the continuation of this is just going to be done trying to convince the Digimon to remember them. But let's not be honest, there'll probably be some bullshit involving the crash. Now the Genai thing. People, some people aren't very happy with this. Genai is evil. Now some people are saying it's the Dark Four, and this is because of the Dark Four that uh, Paimon, Paimon, whatever his name is, put into him with that flashback in season one. I've seen that theory around the internet. Maybe. I don't know. I don't even really remember. What did the Dark Board do? I mean, weren't they like the Dark Gear? Didn't they turn... Didn't they corrupt... Didn't they like turn the Demon Evil or something? I don't remember. Weren't they like the... Were they like the... Were they like the Dark Master version of the Dark Gear? I remember the Dark Gear made people evil. And then when you just seated them, the gear, the four would lead them. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's interesting, I guess. Another question is, how the hell did Maki get into the digital world? And I have heard a theory. I heard a third. I heard a theory. I'll probably, if I remember, I'll link it down below. And not feeling well, so I may forget. You are only gonna be the Christian. I will. But I heard a theory that Maki was going to be a original Diddy Destin. And I'm pretty sure with stated that the original Diddy Children Children or Diddy Diddy Destin failed. It doesn't necessarily mean they died. Like, maybe they found the ticket to get back home and they just left the digital world and they were like, Well, fuck you. We don't care. We're like 12 years old. We don't want to, like, we're not going to fight the day two world. We're kids. We're going to go to the park and play in the playground. Screw you. Goodbye. Maybe something like that happened. You know, yeah, I do kind of like the theory of Maki being an original Diddy Destin. Because she just... She knows more than what you could learn from an organization. Like, she, she had a she had a she had a dark Digi life. With maybe it isn't Ken. Maybe that's going to be their excuse. It isn't Ken, therefore we can accept nobody asking questions about it. Even though it looks just like Ken, and that and that alone is enough of the reason to ask questions. Oh my God, just messed up me. No good. No, but um, yeah, I mean, if I had to rate the Digimon Confession as a whole, I would. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some pace for this. Six out of uh, six out of ten because seven out of ten, seven out of ten. Because the first two episodes are literally almost completely useless, and you could grab the Patamon, you could put all the stuff with Patamon in the beginning of one of the other episodes, and you could have done more. You could have really done more with this. You were kind of blame. I mean, you're worth the TK and Kari scene that I was kind of like, yeah. Yeah, 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 this needs to happen. If, 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 you're, if you're a fan of the original series, you'll know what I'm talking about when you say uh, that, that, that that pairing needs to happen. Just because it's literally, it makes sense. You make on your crap. It makes sense. That's besides the point. Um, yeah, so that is my review. A 7 out of 10. Decent. You definitely need to watch it if you want to watch all of these. And also, unfortunately, uh, the next one didn't come out until February 2017, from what I understand. Which is the same time Attack on Titan season 2 is rumored to come out. I don't, not saying anything, but that may not be a coincidence. They may want to have something like this come out to maybe help them compete. I don't know. I mean, it's probably just coincidence that it will come out at the same time as Attack on Titan Season 2. It's probably just a coincidence, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, an idiot, I'm just a weeaboo idiot on the internet that talks about anime. So how the hell would I know anything? 
But again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me your thoughts on Digimon Tri Confessions in the comment section down below. Uh, if you liked the video, leave it a like. Subscribe for more videos like this. I will be reviewing and reacting to all of the Digimon Tri Specials. I actually will. I actually did a live reaction, so check the channel for that. But yeah, have a great day, guys. The One Piece Nation. Signing out. I am sick and tired.